What's up everybody? It's Dan from Binder Boneyard and today we're going to be repairing some Scout 800 doors. One of the uh, upsides to West Coast iron is that we can use our rigs year-round pretty much and they get a lot of miles put on them and a lot of use means a lot of wear and I'm going to show you here what happens to these uh, 800s and the 80s as well uh, when they just get driven a lot. You can see we've had these doors sandblasted. That one got a little wet. But the door striker, you can see broken, fully torn out, cracks. And same on this one. Screws are breaking out, fully missing. So we're going to make repair pieces for that. So the first thing I did was I chopped out some new plates out of 16 gauged cold roll steel. Uh, most automotive sheet metal is 19 gauge. I know it's a weird number. Uh, we use 18 gauge cold roll on all of our external patches and things like that but because the door striker is a heavy use heavy wear item uh, I wanted to go with something a little bit more sturdy, so 16 gauge cold rolled is what it got. So I cut out the piece out of my material, and then I traced the cutout onto the door. That way you don't have to try and make a piece after you've cut that out. But uh, we're going to cut that out next. So we cut out we i cut out the plate and i want to show you guys something you can see my sharpie line there it's kind of a no duh thing but you know to new guys it might not you might not realize it but you don't actually cut off your line when you are cutting out your shape since you traced around the outside of the piece you already made, your line is actually a little bit bigger than the piece that you cut out. So once you've traced your shape, when you go to cut it out, you want to stay just to the inside or right on the very inside edge of that mark you made. And the amount of kerf that your wheel or your saw blade or whatever you're using to cut out with will vary and also what you use to mark with like I use the Milwaukee Inksol pen because I hate sharpies but uh, it makes a wide line so you'll want to stay inside of that line but if you're using an awl or a scribe that makes a really hard sharp pointed line then you're going to be real close to that line as far as where you need to cut just if you're using a crayon or something like that that has a big wide mark, don't cut it all off or you're going to end up with a bigger hole than what you need. So you can see I got pretty close. I got to just kiss it with a disc. Uh, it's real critical that this piece stays about where it's supposed to be, you know, how you cut out your piece because that's going to help with the door alignment and how well it closes. So, uh, you don't want to get too far out of your spot. One thing uh, to show, I use the original hardware to make the countersink. I just back it up with a heavy socket or something and then I put it in the press. Uh, it doesn't have to be a very strong press, but just a press to get that screw to settle down in there it'll tighten up flush once you secure it the other thing is is if you got your latch don't forget to test fit your holes your lineup everything you know make sure you got room wiggle it around so that you can make some adjustments so you can see now i have my piece done you know, you guessed it, cut the big hole with the hole saw, and I 
paid a beaver to come chew that slot out and transfer punch for getting my holes in the right spot. So now we will fit it into the door. All right, so you can see it started tacking the piece back in. Small tacks spread out. I like to use air to keep my tacks cool. I've seen guys use wet rags. Uh, to me, that just seems like a bad idea um, since you just went to all the trouble to clean the part you're working on. But anyway, um, so we'll slowly tack this in, keeping it cool, and uh, get the other one in. So I'll continue welding these in and start cleaning them up. So it's going to take a little bit because you got to go slow and keep it cool and, uh, you know, take your time. So it uh, can be a little bit, but I'll come back and show you guys what the mostly final product is going to look like. There they are. Welded in. Cleaned up. Needs a little bit more. Probably just kiss them with a hand file to make sure everything is perfect. And there you have it. Uh, it took me... With all the interruptions and everything, if I try to cut those out, I think I had five hours in that start to finish. Um, so I don't know, it's probably not the fastest, but uh, not the worst either. Um, so tomorrow I will work on other parts of that door because the driver's door has some nastiness. But anyways, um, hopefully you learned something. Hopefully it was informative. Uh, and yeah, thanks for following along. Thank you.